<sighs> Alright guys, for the first time since I started doing these Witten's videos, I'm having to record in a different location. I'm currently in my cave bedroom in Turkey, but the show must go on. I'm currently out in Cappadocia. I'm waiting for my workshop group to turn up. They'll be here for a week and we'll be doing all sorts of twilight photography, Milky Way, landscape. We've got a private hot air balloon ride coming up. Uh, so if you guys want to find out about any future workshops, make sure to subscribe to my mailing list. There's a little link in the description below. But we're heading into September, which for me is like the end of the summer night sky. It's actually quite a boring month uh, this month. But because it's the end of the summer night sky, it's also the end of Milky Way season. After this month, the core will begin to set below the horizon. So this is the last really good month to photograph the Milky Way core. So after sunset and after the twilight stages are finished, you'll find the Milky Way core in the south. And over the course of the night, it will set below the horizon at about midnight, 1 a.m., depending on your location, and it will set in the southwest. And we've got full moon on the 25th at the end of the month. So new moon is on the 9th at the beginning of the month, meaning that the Milky Way window is about the 1st to the 20th. But if you want to get the Milky Way core, you're going to have to go out in the earlier weeks of the month because uh, towards the latter end of the Milky Way window, the moon will be hindering your chances of getting the core. So if you want the Milky Way core, go out in the first couple of weeks of the month because uh, this is the last good month to get the Milky Way core. And although Milky Way season is coming to an end, you'll still be able to capture some parts of the Milky Way in the months going ahead, such as the Cygnus region and the region that's found in the Cassiopeia constellation. But I'll talk about those more next month when it becomes a bit more relevant. As for the planets, let's dip into Stellarium. So just after sunset, we've got Venus in the southwest. And Venus is shining really bright this month at a magnitude of minus 4.6 but it doesn't stick around very long it'll be in the twilight skies and it will set soon after the sun so you're gonna have to be quick to get it before it sets below the horizon and then as darkness falls moving along the ecliptic you'll find Jupiter which is shining at a decent minus 1.9 but again, that will be set in very early on in the night. And if we move across even further, we will find Saturn, which is still in the constellation of Sagittarius, which is just in front of the Milky Way. And that's shining at a magnitude of 0 0.4, 0 0.5 this month, so not very bright. And then moving further along, You'll find Mars also in the southern skies. Now Mars has been shining really bright the past couple of months uh, as it um, passed its opposition. But this month it will start the month at minus 2.1 and then it will fade to a minus 1.3 by the end of the month. So Mars is really starting to lose its brilliance this month. Now as I mentioned, September for me is like the end of the summer night sky. So if you look overhead after sunset and after the twilight stages, you'll see the asterism known as the Summer Triangle, uh, which is made up of Vega, Altair and Deneb, three bright stars from different constellations. And that kind of denotes that it's the summer night sky. But by the time we get to the sort of pre-dawn hours, you'll see Orion rising in the east. Orion is coming back. Orion replaces the Milky Way in the night sky. They kind of take it in turns to take over the night sky. Uh, but I'll talk a bit more about Orion next month. It's still a little bit early, but you will see Orion rising in the mornings. So you know that the winter night sky is coming. Now last month we had the Perseids meteor shower. Uh, I put my vlog up a couple of weeks ago. Um, I was out here in Turkey uh, in a place called Sandras. It has some really, really good conditions for the Perseids meteor shower. But this month, there's not really any meteor showers going on, nothing of interest. But September does have high rates of sporadic meteors. So if you're out and about, you may get lucky and you may catch the odd fireball. 
Also, as I mentioned last month, uh, if you want to try a little bit of sort of deep space astrophotography, Pleiades and the Andromeda Galaxy are still in really good observable positions. So especially if you have a star tracking mount, an EQ mount, uh, it's worth hunting those down uh, and using a telephoto lens like a 70 to 200 or maybe a 135 prime. Um, and that kind of like is the blurred lines between wide angle astrophotography and, and deep space stuff. Uh, so worth having to go at those while still in the night sky. And that's really all I have for you this month. There's really not a lot going on. It's a bit of a transitional month. Uh, and next month things will start getting a lot different. So we're going to look at the Wittens hashtag now. Last month I wanted two categories. I said I'd pick the three favourites from the, the lunar eclipse that we had at the end of July. And of course the Percy's meteor shower. So... Starting with this image from A. Whitbourne at Beachy Head. He managed to take 360 shots until he finally got a nice Perseid meteor that he was after and it fell in a very nice compositionally placed location. I also loved this image from James Allison. There's a nice collection of Perseids there and you've got the Earth's major constellation popping out nicely. And lastly this one from Slade 2012 really love this aspect of the person in the image just kind of enjoying the show and kicking back and that's what I love about the Perseids is that because it's in August it's, it's usually a really comfortable night you can go out and not get cold and you can really kick back and enjoy the show so I kind of love how this image captures that feeling for me. On to the lunar eclipse that we had. I really like this image from ANDG Photos really creative holding up this uh, eclipse sign uh, using the telephoto there to make the moon nice and big and there's two variations this one with a bit more focus on the sign and the moon out of focus I thought it was really cool I liked it really like this image also by Max WB where he's got it perfectly lined up with this mass telephone mast or whatever it is um, I just really love that the the contrast between the blue and the rich red of the moon I uh, really like this image and lastly this one from Phil Verney who managed to capture it rising in London and this is what I love about the moon is that no amount of light pollution will ever wash out the moon uh, so it's a kind of astrophotography that's available to, to everyone depending on the weather obviously because I know a lot of you guys, myself included, didn't get lucky with the weather for the lunar eclipse this month um, uh, Siemens, there's really not a lot going on this month I just think I'm just going to leave it as a free for all um, and I'm just going to flick with Witten's hashtags and find my three favourites. But I'm going to I'm going to look for stuff that's a bit creative, stuff that's a bit different. So if you guys put your thinking caps on and just I don't know, surprise me. So that is it for this month. Don't forget to check out the first year's Meteor Show of Vlog if you haven't already. A really exciting video coming soon to announce a new product, a new super portable star tracker. Uh, so stay tuned for that and if you're going out to enjoy the night sky anytime soon, I wish you good luck and clear skies.